lights don't come in See the lightning strike Black people rising Boys last year that wanted to play in the NBA. Of that million, only 400,000 will even make it to play high school ball. Of that 400,000, only 4,000 will be able to make it to play college ball. Of that 4,000, only 35 will make it to the NBA. Of that 35, only seven start. And the average life in the NBA is four years. So the real problem is we have a million brothers looking for seven full-time jobs that last four years. And yet last year we had 100,000 jobs available to be a computer programmer, engineer, or doctor, and only 1,000 brothers qualified. So our appeal to black males is to really Realize the odds that that you do most will be that that you do best. I mean, we were the first doctor, not Hippocrates, in Hopetep. So we have the ability either in math or science or music and sports. But that that you do most will be that that you do best. If you play basketball from three o'clock to nine o'clock, you'll be a very good basketball player. If you went home and went to the library, you'd be a very good scholar. We need more black male role models that will encourage our youth in math and science. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Emoji Circle. My name is Keith Smokey Johnson and I hope today's discussion will be something that will be, uh, when this book was written that I'm going to introduce you uh, to, it was written in uh, 1980 and I think it just is relevant today in the, in, in the 21st century. But before I get started, uh, for those of you who are new to the show, my name is uh, Keith Smokey Johnson. And I am the host of the Emoji Circle. Uh, the Emoji Circle is an African-centered talk show whose purpose is to correct errors where errors are found and to introduce facts where we find that so many people are working on fiction when it's come to who we are as people of African descent. Uh, the, the Emoji Circle also believe that only through dialogue, through conversation, can there be a shift in consciousness? And when there's a shift in consciousness, there's a shift in the world. Uh, so let's get started. As you can see, I got some books in front of me. Two of the, one, the books that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, was one, this one here uh, is, the, is based on what I'm going to be discussing. It, this is part one uh, called The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. Interesting, or countering the conspiracy to, to uh uh, Destroy Black Boys. It's a very interesting book, and it was written by this gentleman who's going to show an image of him, uh, the one that you heard talk in the uh, video clip that uh, opened this uh, show. Uh, that's the younger version of him, That's uh, and the video clip maybe kept, uh, it happened, uh, I think, sometime in the, in the 90s, the late 80s. Uh, Dr. Kunjufu, his name is Dr. Jawanda Kunjufu, and uh, he's been doing this work for over 40 years. Like I said, the book that's uh, sold over a million copies, The uh, the Conspiracy, Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, uh, that's him now uh, currently uh, doing his thing and going around um, uh, doing workshops and uh, at colleges and uh, all kinds of organizations from YMCA's to, to big global meetings because that's been his passion. To, uh, he's a teacher. And just like the master teacher that I tried to introduce you to in the uh, um, Umoja circle when I said to correct errors, to errors are found, well, these are the people that we need to know have been doing the work uh, out there. You're not going to see them on the um, uh, regular news media. They seem to bypass the people who understand the problems when there's riots, when there's things to deal with races, when it, where there's issues about black men and black boys or black women or black people, period. We do have our great scholars, but somehow they're left out of the loop. Okay, uh, so, but uh, he's one of the people that I, I think uh, you should know about, and he has many books. Uh, Dr. Kun Jufu uh, was born in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, he received his bachelor's degree uh, at Illinois State and his uh, Union uh, and uh, Union Graduate School, and he went on to get his doctor's degree. Uh, this is book. These are some of the books he wrote. Over forty books, 
and you see some of them being flashed there on the screen in front of you. Uh, this is one thing that's also a good companion book to uh, countering the, 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 the conspiracy to destroy black minds because understanding black male learning style, he is a teacher. He understands, he uses studies that are found in these books. He quotes studies that's done by uh, universities like Michigan and other social scientists to show that there is a particular learning style that black boys, based on the culture that we come out of, that is sometimes ignored, not sometimes, definitely ignored when they go through these uh, uh, public school systems, okay? Uh, now, the, the next book you see, I just want to show that he doesn't only do boys, uh, he does talk about raising black girls and educating black girls also amongst his 40 books or so. But we're going to focus on, and also one of his majors in college was economics. So this is another, so he talks about uh, uh, black economics also. So another one of those great uh, books that you might want. Very easy read. Uh, and, you know, uh, not complicated, but he makes sense. And again, he's been doing it since the early 80s, a very brilliant uh, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to introduce you uh, to him. Um, in, the, in that uh, opening uh, video clip, he said something that was very profound. That's why I put it, because I heard that many years ago. Uh, it was a quote, I think, Contribute, he contributed it to uh, Michael Jordan, who said there's a million people trying to take his job. But you got a million black folks, young black boys. Why is it that all, all these young black boys want to be uh, basketball players? They only see them focused on that. Or other, other than that, the, you see black men being vilified in the, in, in, in the, in the, on the internet today. We, 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 we dog, we're dogs, we, we, we can't be dependent on. Why is this image of black uh, men uh, in such a negative light? Why is there, uh, 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 you see videos or movies of black men just hanging out on street corners, okay, or not seem to be uh, doing anything other productive? even though for 246 years in 1619 to 1865, uh, we were enslaved people. And enslavement means work. So it wasn't that black men genetically were lazy people. That's the, that's the, the, the nonsense that's been told afterward to justify the inhumanity the human, the man uh, that was done, the apartheid system that has been part of America. That's only ended in 1964, okay? But this system has been around for hundreds of years prior, and it's still embedded into the psyche of America. And Dr. Kanjufu says it's even in our school system because of the, the perceptions that black people have been uh, vilified with, especially young black boys who seem to see uh, a danger. We look at black men. We always focus on black men. But until you understand that the damage is done to black boys, before they become men, then you will not understand that. If you only wait until you're dealing with a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old or 30-year-old black man, man who is unemployed, who is hanging in the streets, or just got out of the prison system, why he ended up in that prison system, why he is unemployed, and all the other things that went again happened when he was a black boy. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let's go on uh, and, and we can start the discussion. Okay, this is just talking about what I said. Uh, uh, he ordered uh, over 40 books. Okay, and uh, there's like a, again, it shows that there's a, a, a volume two to the uh, destruction. I think now uh, a volume three came out uh, with the uh, countering the destruction, uh, which has all the information that you want, statistics. And, 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 and solutions. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, <clears throat> he does workshops all over the country, all over the world, really, okay? I uh, talked about black male-female relationships, um, uh, critical concerns in the areas of raising our children, uh, black, especially black males. Again, he focused on the black males because we are important uh, in our black community. And if the and 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 our black women need us, okay. And if we are not functioning fully, or damaged by the time we get out of 
of, of, of high school not prepared for the world because the system was not put in place to enhance us that way. And that's what, what he wants to talk about, about countering the, the, the conspiracy to destroy us. Because a system of apartheid that created the public school system didn't have black boys and uh, black girls or black children uh, in the best interest, uh, even uh, after the Board of Education uh, said that we were uh, free to go to whatever school we wanted to in 1954. Let's go on. Okay. I believe, and I agree with uh, Dr. Jufu, uh, that we have to look critically at those who are teaching our children, you know, particularly our African-American males. Statistics show that only 6% of our teaching profession in African Amer are African-Americans, okay? Of this, only 1% is African-American males. Why is that? 83% are white females, and, they, and there have been a 66% uh, decline in African-American teachers since 1954. And, and, what, and, and there's another book that I showed that I did a couple of months ago talked about uh, uh, segregation pink slips. That's the name of that book. And what it, it deals with that issue before 1950, that's why this, this uh, uh, point is taken, that, the, that 1954, that's Brown versus the Board of Education, when the separate but e uh, 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 unequal ruling came down from the Supreme Court, which opened up um, the uh, schools uh, for people of African descent. And, uh, but the system that still controlled the apartheid system, white males who controlled it in state governments uh, uh, throughout the, the South and other parts of the country after 1954 in states like, coincidentally, Florida, they closed down schools rather than follow what the Supreme Court in 1954 did, okay? They, they, they refused to uh, accept integration of black people. Why? Why is this system so um, set on keeping us separate from each other? But, but, it, but it did damage to our people. Now, one good thing about it, you know, black, poor black farmers in the South or, or, and black people in general always pooled their wealth. We were always part of the education system. Here's another book that I, I think you should also look at. Uh, it's called uh, The Education of Blacks in the South from 1860 to 1935. And those who think, um, like after, now we think that black people, or black, young black boys are dumb and stupid and only images you see is drug dealers. Black people have always been about education. And why is it since 1954, Dr. Kujufu says, uh, that all of a sudden we have these problems? You know, black teachers had to be uh, educated in order to survive in this um, apartheid system. You had to do better. Most of the black teachers before 1950 uh, were, had, de had degrees, uh, master's degrees and doctor's degrees, some just to be a kindergarten student in order to do better. But after 1954, a lot of black teachers lost their jobs and our black children, especially black boys. And there was a lot of them. Since back in the early uh, 20th century, it's a male dominant. There was still a lot, there were a lot of ma black male teachers in, in the primary school system. Uh, but what you have today in the primary school system got more females and mostly white females because well, they're the ones who filled in that vacuum when the schools were desegregated uh, after 1954. Again, most of the black teachers were fired or demoted. So all those black schools that had uh, positive role models as principals and uh, school districts the superintendents and those type of things in the segregated black schools, they lost their jobs. And we have this thing, and that's what he's talking about. It wasn't done coincidentally. It's nothing done genetically to our people. It was conspired, deliberate.
and our young black, especially young black boys are paying attention, uh, pay, uh, paying the price for it. And uh, there is a reason. Let's go on to talk about this some more. Okay. Now, in volume one of the, the that's the book one, uh, this is what he goes over. Uh, who is against black boys? I kind of talked about a little bit of the system, you know, systematic racism, okay, done by dominantly white males for hundreds of years. They're the ones who run the system. Uh, it wasn't white females, even though they conspired in certain ways and benefited certain ways. Many of the civil rights uh, laws benefited white females since 1964. That's a fact. Uh, why is there a conspiracy against them? Why is there? Well, this is a male-dominant society, a white male-dominant society. Black males are a threat, okay? And if you just mess with the young black boy, that's where you're going to control the black male, in a sense. If you mess with his mind from the time he go into your school systems, Okay, this might sound like hyperbole, but this is what we have to deal with in America from the 1950s. Even though we talk about, you know, Brown versus the Board of Education, that it is some kind of uh, glorious thing happened. No, the system has always tried to maintain control. Okay, so that's what the conspiracy is. And yeah, again, when did the conspiracy start? It really started uh, since, um, again, when they control us, in a sense, by law, uh, as enslaved people, then in 1865, when we became uh, supposedly freed, <laughs> but we were not given any kind of economics, you got 246 years of, 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 uh, uh, of uh, uh, free labor, okay? We weren't stupid people. The fact that you might not be able to read did not mean you were dumb. It's just that you didn't understand the symbols that were used to call language or the, 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 the books that were written in the dominant group's perspective, okay? But we always did ex education. One of the things that people don't realize, again, according to this book that I'm uh, uh, on the other end that I talk on another show, but I just brought it in to support what uh, Dr. Kajufu is talking about and what I'm talking about is that it is something that uh, we've always enhanced, but the system even built into, that's what he calls systematic racism. You got systematic racism in the criminal justice system, systematic racism in the political system, and even in the educational system. It was systematic racism, a perspective, a control, uh, and how the approach to teaching black children was uh, embedded with a lot of racial biases. And those who are teaching our children who do not know our culture have built-in biases that they might even be aware of. And this is what Dr. Kunjusu says is one of the, the problems. It might not be a deliberate conspiracy for everybody, but it is a system that has been put together to keep us separate in ways that kind of bend and fit the, the so-called legal jargon of civil rights. But if you control the system, you can, you can make the system work any way you want to, to work. And we have to be conscious of that and conscious of how and where and, and, and how our children are being taught. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, volume two, basically, the relationship between boys, and this is very important. Uh, not only the teachers, like that book that uh, I showed you earlier, but the, our relationship to the, uh, the mothers are looked at. That's in book two of uh, uh, the conspiracy to uh, destroy black boys. Relationship, again, between teachers and black male students are looked back in book two. Uh, uh, he quotes case studies that are done by universities in that book, and uh, we might get to those things uh, later on in this broadcast, okay? And it's also, which I always believe in, uh, a, a, a way of uh, all communities should shape how our black boys are taught to be men. Because today, you can see that a lot of people use the word manhood, but when do you become a boy, a, a man? 
when you're, you know, nine or ten? Is there some kind of signal? No, unless a unless a man tell you you are past that point where we look at you as man in society. We have a lot of confused young boys out there thinking that they are men or trying to do things they find in the streets that they consider man good, and they only end up getting in trouble. A controlled environment, rites and passage, is, is something that is still necessary. <clears throat> it is ancient, African, other cultures do it. The Spartans did it. They took young boys from the age of seven, took away from their mothers, and, and, and produced the type of men that they needed for Sparta to create the, the type of men that will serve that society. All ancient people do it, it's been, but it has been done in Africa for thousands of years. And we got disconnected from that when we were brought here uh, in this system of, of enslavement and apartheid that still have the effect on us to this day. We have disconnected ourselves from that. Let's go on. Okay, this is something that you should understand. There's some, <clears throat> there's a reason we think that uh, there's a lot, there's, right now, there's something like for every one male, there's two female, black females. And I'm gonna talk about black folks. That's what this show is about. Okay, and you wonder why is that, but did you know that at birth, there are more black males, more males, but more black males born than black females. This is worldwide. It's throughout the diaspora. At birth, there's approximately, it's, it's, uh, the statistics show, 1.03% black boys born in America. At birth, there are approximately 1.0, less than, they're close, but still less, black girls born in America every year. But why? The question is, but why? By the time both groups reach the age of 18 years of age, there's only 1% available black men in America compared to over 1.8% black women. Okay, at birth, we're more, but by the time 18 years later, hmm, and as it says in the bottom, uh, the only question that should be going through our minds right now is what happened? And that's what the thesis that Dr. Kanjufu is trying to say, and that's what I'm trying to bring forth. There is no coincidence. Black men are not dumb. Black men are not dogs. Black men, it's tough being a man in a, in, a, in a society where you have to provide anyway, regardless of what what color your skin is. But for black men, we're all the um, where the, the school system is against them, where the criminal justice system is against them, where drugs are dumped into the only community that he has to live and where he's f constantly forced out of the household to find work, um, to live up to that image of a man providing. Uh, it caused a lot of issues for a black man that's not really addressed in some of the discussions that I'm hearing lately. Let's go on. Okay, what makes men unavailable for black women by the time at least 18? Well, we all see what goes on. Look at some of the shows that we got for black role models, drug pushers or kingpins, right? And where did they end up? Everybody's proud, end up in prison, okay? Or death for various reasons. Not only death by uh, gunshot, but there's a high suicide rate. The high suicide rate is white males. Let's get that straight first. But men also have, commit suicide. Again, living up to an image of prosperity when you don't have the funds or the society has roadblocks. I'm talking about black men. Especially if you come out of prison and you try to go into the, the streets and you can't get a job, you can't, you can't provide for the family, but you're constantly being told you got to be a man, and sometimes the pressure gets to, uh, to men and they take their lives. And other reasons, then drugs, are just a few. There are others, but uh, it, the drugs are pumped in. Look at, the, look at the, uh, the, the crack epidemic. And prior to that, it was heroin, uh, went through in the 50s that went through uh, black communities who had unemployment. I know we see the unemployment rates, the national unemployment rate of 5% and 4%, but in black communities, they reach as high as 25% to, uh, percent in the community themselves, okay? Why is that? Again, why? Is it a conspiracy? Yes, 
There, there, there is a reason. Let's go on. Let's talk, that's what we're talking about this. Okay. Again, this is a good, another point that I found in the book very interesting in, in the uh, uh, countering the conspiracy to destroy uh, black boys. We usually tend to ask these questions about black men, 18, that's the, <clears throat> the ones 18 and over in our communities. For example, uh, why do you, you know, you see, always see images when you see movies or TV shows of black men, uh, uh, black boys uh, tune out of school from you know, middle school through high school. Why do a lot of young black uh, men constantly seem to hang out more on corners? I, I did that when I was young. All right, skipping school before I got my act together. Why do black men seem to, to lack direction? It's not that we don't lack direction, it's because we don't see something that reflects us a lot of times in, in school <clears throat> or, in, or in, uh, in the society. There's a point that you must understand that black men, especially young black boys, are smart, very smart. But you have a system that doesn't understand the, the cultural nuances, and you have teachers who have a preconceived bias, unconscious or conscious bias, against our young boys. Uh, you, you know that most of the, the 40 of the, I think our school system, there's something like 70% of them are black, between 17 to 20% in our school system are black people, okay? 41% of the detention in schools across, these are another statistics, 41% of the detention or special ed classes are dominated by black boys. Okay, all of them have special ed needs? No, there's some kind of ingrained bias where they don't understand the little cultural ticks and nuances of of fessy boys, you know, rambunctious boys, uh, active boys, short attention span boys, but that's looked at as a negative thing for people who have ingrained biases. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> it's, uh, and uh, Dr. Kim Jufu said in, in his book, and I found this very interesting. If, again, if, you're, if you are only asking these questions about our young black men who've reached the age of 18 and are now considered men, you're 18 to 30 years too late. Okay, he said that it is not a conspiracy to destroy black men. I kind of disagree, yes. Maybe worded a little different, but yes, there is a conspiracy to destroy black men, but it's a conspiracy to destroy black boys. In other words, they start at, at, at black boys. But as usual, time's running out, so I'll continue this discussion on the next segment, part two. So until next time, peace, hotep, bye-bye. <laughs>